Hi, ako si Dr. Anna Tuazon, isang psychologist at professor at kakwentuhan niyo sa share ko lang. Today, makakausap natin ang math genius at graduate ng Massachusetts Institute of Technology na may perfect grade, si Farel Eldrian Wu. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall be welcoming contestants from around 110 countries and regions around the world. Team Philippines! Sa murang edad pa lang, nakitaan na siya ng kakaibang galing sa mathematics. Kaya naman, hindi nakapagtataka na makapasok siya sa world's top university for 10 years ayon sa QS World University Rankings, ang Massachusetts Institute of Technology o MIT sa Amerika. The 57th International Mathematical Olympiad gold medal goes to Philippines. Isa rin siya sa kauna-unahang Pinoy na nag-uwi ng gintong medalya para sa bansa sa International Math Olympiad noong 2016. So I know that diba, there's so many things um, you know, um, said about you in terms of genius, MIT grad, perfect grade average, etc. Pero siguro before all that, right? Before all those accomplishments, gusto ko malaman, no? You know, who are you outside of being a student, diba? outside of being a professional? So yeah, uh, I, I'd say like outside like my, like say my, my academic accomplishments, I'd say I'm like very, I'm fairly laid back. I enjoy like say like, just like hanging out with friends, just like, uh, just like going on walks, like say jogging, exploring restaurants. So I think I tend to just just like take things slow, like once I'm like outside work mode. Yeah. Although like I'm still like very interested in, and I keep on learning new things just because one, I think that I might be able to apply it somewhere, like what, what I learn. And secondly, it's just something that I find fulfilling to like just continue expanding like my like my knowledge about the world. And yung pinakaunang um, memory mo or experience to say, wow, math is fun. I'd say like in preschool, like kinder can like in kindergarten. So I've done a lot. Obviously, I've done like in classes. Like I've done, I've done math, and I and I I've, I've done well in that. So I think what I enjoy is like going down to the school library, looking at the newspaper, and I think the I usually open like the business sheet because like the business page because there's like this like, like the stock prices and it's just like nice to see like the like how the different numbers could like relate to each other. Like the sheet of numbers, it could actually represent something larger. But what's nice when I like, open the newspaper, like for example, look at stock, look at stuff like the forex rate. The numbers actually mean something. That's what made me like really interested in it because it could be used to like refer to things in the in the real world and like use it to model things in the real world also. So what did your parents think? I'm curious, no? You're young, you're a young kid looking at forex numbers. Um, did they were they the ones actually who told you about well, it? I don't think so. It's just because like. Say, say if I'm when I'm at the school library, I, I somehow just get bored and I want to explore things. So, but I think my parents were supportive when it comes to this, when it comes to this interest. And I think they also gave me a lot of freedom to explore. Did you have other friends that, you know, did you get them excited also for it? Yeah, so in that early on, I think there were not that many in my school who were very excited about, excited about math, but I was fortunate to join like a several like math training organizations starting grade three which allowed me to like meet other students who are very interested in math. The Philippines in particular has a very active math contest scene and which is very it's very useful in like letting students interested in math like meet each other. When I hear your interviews, when I hear you talk about math, about learning, parang it's not just because, you know, it's not just studying for you, right? You always mention yeah. learning and you seem to enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, I really, yeah, I really, I really enjoy it. So, so yeah, my, I think my area over like the past few years, like I've done like math and programming contests. I represented the Philippines, and ever since then, my my like area has been on the applications of math to like different, like to like different like applied fields. Meron bang mga adjustment that you had to make in MIT? I mean, MIT is so prestigious that you know that, that when someone gets in. It's on our news, <laughs> right? It's newsworthy. So, are there any adjustments? Was it what you expected it to be? Was it a little intimidating at the at first? I believe that it's very that the environment and like the difficulty is already 
very similar to what I've been used to, like in the from like the Mad Olympiads, and like I've also done like programming Olympiads. So the level of like competition there, which I think, at which I'm fortunate, like many Filipinos are now are now involved there, at least way more compared to like say like five or ten years ago. Like the level of competition there is, I'd say, at the level or even slightly higher than what I've seen at MIT. So mm-hmm. I think I've been well prepared by this by this experience. Mm. I mean, so what I keep hearing, no, parang somehow, right? Actually, the the learning curve in terms of environment, cultural adjustment, it wasn't so steep. Parang everything you experienced, all the challenges. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think for cultural adjustment, also, like I've also been fortunate that, like, to to contest, like, to like other like activities, I was able to get to know a lot of students from around the world already. So I think, and 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 MIT is a very like international environment. I think like. Among undergraduates, around like fifteen percent is international, and like from all the continents like of the world. You were learning, uh, meeting with older students, because the but that's your level. I assume, right? It sounds like your learning was okay, was exciting. Um, yeah. What is it like having to be in a classroom in a group full of older people? I was like nearly two years younger than the other students, so I think it. I think I, I always had this experience, but one I. Don't think it was that it was that big of a deal because I think when especially when we're discussing like technical topics, uh, say like, hey math, like it's all like like math doesn't math doesn't like, see you like how old you are. Right? It's just like your appreciation of it and like how and like how much you, like you, you you understand it, for example. And I think like this experience of being younger is actually a good preparation for like say say like not now I'm working. Like I think everyone when they start working at a company, they they're, they're naturally the youngest since. Like yeah, but just by definition. So I think I'm glad to have this experience of like having to learn from all my peers because that's something that I I do a lot right now. Mm, so in a way, actually, parang good preparation. Uh, when I was competing for the IMO, like the International Math Olympiad, which is like the Olympics of like math contests in, in high schools, and when I was in grade 11, I think I was both the youngest on the team and also the most senior on the team. Since that was my fourth time to join, but I was six, six I was like 15 then, I think. Mm. And most most contestants were like 16 or 17. I think I was able to like say bring that like part like impart the like, knowledge that has been collected over time. I heard you used to tutor. Yeah, so I, I mostly tutor like within the math contest circles in the in the Philippines. For the average Filipino, sabi ng nila, marami sa kanila takot sa math, di ba? They just hear math and they get scared. What can you say to that, or what can you you know? Is there anything you can do to assure them that math is not so scary? I think it's really the growth mindset. So my opinion is that if like someone like puts enough time, they'd get to at least a proficient level. Maybe they won't necessarily become like a like at the at the, at the very top, but at least they'd get to a level in which that they could that they'd be able to explore it further if they want or like say if they just want to say like get a good grade in their class. Like as long as you spend enough time on it, you'd get you'd get to that level. So I think mm-hmm. it's just having the growth mindset, just knowing that in general, if you spend more time on something, you're going to make more progress. Like if one like very resourceful, then this would like allow them to like make a lot of progress. Actually, I resonate ako with you because I'm an educator also, right? Is the idea of the motivation, the yeah. passive learning, and it's standardized, right? One size yeah. one size fits all. And yeah. when it comes to math anxiety or math stress, it's actually not math ability. That predicts that, de ba? Sometimes the stress and the anxiety for a lot of people. I I don't know if you experience that at all. <laughs> Maybe I think your interest and excitement, no, trumps that. I, I think. Well, I sometimes I sometimes do as well. It's not. Yeah, I think like definitely there's some topics which I, which I which I find more challenging, and it's sometimes I'm like kind of a bit afraid to like touch it because I think it's a bit it's too hard. But like sometimes I think I should just like tell myself to like. I, I think I just just at least I just spend some time on it. Then maybe I can mm. understand it better. You know, in a way, that's very important for people to know, no? Because when people hear the word genius, and I'm I don't I, I'm curious actually how you feel about that label, right? But when he, they hear the word genius, they think ah, madale para sa kanya lahat, de ba? He just goes for it, launches it. Everything is easy. How true or how false is that? I say a lot of this is false because there's many times which I also have a hard time in, in in something. I think just just as an example, you were I think you were talking about the like like say like people like getting like scared of math or or something like this. So I also have like my personal experience. Like when I was in my first year in, in college, like I was 
I really like wanted to learn more about say like statistics and machine learning. And like when I like try to open the textbook, it just like full of symbols that I just had never any exposure to because I've just not done map of this flavor before. This is kind of a similar experience, like what people what makes people scared of math because like when you just see like a, a textbook with like a lot of symbols that you don't understand and like you don't really know the context also behind it, then it, then that would really be scary. So no, I don't doubt that this experience would be scary to like a lot of people. So I think how I dealt with this is just approaching it slowly, like like part by part, trying to like get multiple perspectives of the material. Like right now we have the internet. If you if they think, if they say like a topic that's kind of like blocking you or something, then if you if you Google it, this very likely it's gonna be multiple explanations and like reading them reading a couple of them will probably one of them will will like click. So definitely important to know that right? even geniuses, even people with good ability, even very talented, smart people, right? Siyempre, they, yeah. they encounter stumbling blocks, challenges, diba? Um, hindi naman yeah. sa, you look at one textbook and then that's it. You got it. It also yeah, takes yeah. work. Yeah, and especially now with the internet, that's really one to emphasize because like there's just so much information, so much resources available at your fingertips. Like that, I, that wasn't the case when I was like growing up, like when I was like in like early 2000, like 2010, like there's not that much, like there's not that much educational material on the internet yet. You've achieved a lot, definitely for your age. You definitely worked for it. And it's also a blessing at the same time, right? Sabi mo parang, okay, you've had the support, right? Of people throughout your math journey. Right. And I guess you reached MIT and very, not very, very few Filipinos. You know, get get to do what you what you've done. So there's also not just genius here, right? There's a there's a passion and an advocacy that I'm sensing. Yeah. So how you know do you feel a responsibility to give back with everything that you've achieved? How do you deal with that? I, I think I've also been fortunate with a lot of opportunities I've had, and I just wish for a lot of other people to have this sort of opportunity as well to like say learn to like start learn like math and like a sit in a similar effective way that I did. So that's like that's like a large motivation and like why I started Operation Matthew in high school. And I started like my own classes in in certain like applied math topics while in college. It's because I think that being able to like learn something in a very effective way and in a in a man in a and that the fact that these like brought me opportunities, I'd like other people to also be able to to learn it mm-hmm. and, and also benefit from this from their from their experience. A lot of people are actually interested in pursuing something, maybe math or something else, but it feels too hard. Or it feels like, no, that's for geniuses, not for someone like me, right? And yeah. so yeah, what's that one thing you want to tell them? What people think are geniuses are just is usually the rest the result of like having of like having had like good ex- good exposure to the material and just investing a lot of time in, into it. And like, especially right now, there's like less, there's much less barriers to knowledge due to the internet. The resource part is more, is way more accessible. So it's really just up to, like, it's just up to like spending enough time if you're really interested in that. Thank you so much, Pharrell. And oh my goodness, thank you so much for your patience and for yeah, everyone no, actually. No worries about this part. yung pag-usapan, mag-iwan lang ng comment below or email us at share ko lang at gmanews.tv We're also streaming on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Thanks for tuning in!